How's it going everybody? My name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I built these raised planters that are indestructible. I used composite decking so that the water will never rot the wood and aluminum legs so that they'll never rust. So let's get started on Modern Builds. Today's video is sponsored by The Home Depot, who asked me to design a DIY project using their environmentally friendly products to celebrate their involvement with the Green Build Conference, which I'll be talking about later on in this video. Each of my planners is gonna be made up of just over three pieces of this one by six composite decking. And it's not the cheapest thing in the world, so I wanna make sure and measure twice before I do any cutting. I also took a second to set up a stop block before I did any of my repeating cuts. That way I made sure all of my pieces were the exact same length. This project was the first time I had ever used any composite decking material and I was surprised at just how cleanly and easily the material cut. To create the shell of each of my planners, I cut four pieces at 36 inches long and four other pieces at 16 inches. While I was at Home Depot picking up materials, I grabbed this countersink bit so that I can recess my screw heads just below the surface of the wood. These screws are eventually gonna be covered by the legs of the planners, so it's important that they're at least flush if not sitting below the surface of the material. And to add some long-term stability to this whole project, I'm using Gorilla Clear Construction Adhesive on all of my joints. This is a new product from Gorilla and it's my first time using it and I found that it worked really well. Once it cured, it was incredibly strong and it's easy to clean up any squeeze out with a razor blade. It's important to keep in mind the scalloped bottom of the composite decking boards. You want to make sure that wherever you're screwing into, there's plenty of material for the screws to grab onto. So even though I pre-drilled a lot of my holes, I ended up re-drilling them. That way, all of my screws would line up in the right position. Let's just say I made the mistake so you don't have to. Regardless, it's no big deal because the legs, like I said before, are going to cover up these joints anyways. So I think we can both agree, these corners are really ugly and we've got to do something about them. We also need to make legs for the planters, so I'm going to knock both of those problems out by using angle aluminum to cover up the corners and make legs. Aluminum is a great material for DIY projects because it's such a soft metal. Normal woodworking tools have no problem cutting through it, but it still allows you to create projects with really cool profiles that you wouldn't be able to get out of wood. I used a file to clean up all of my cut edges on the aluminum, that way it was smooth to the touch, and then I put on a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum 2X in the color Oregano. It's a great color, and I also thought it was fitting since I'm going to be using one of these planters as an herb garden, and I'm planting Oregano in it. And once I gave the paint plenty of time to cure, I grabbed my construction adhesive, and I thought I would use that to attach the legs to the boxes. I line the leg up flush with the top of the frame and then use squeeze clamps to hold it all in place. Now I'm not gonna lie, this plan probably would have worked if I gave the adhesive plenty of time to cure before I moved on to the next step. But I rushed the adhesive and only gave it about a half of an hour to cure. You're gonna see why that was a bad idea in just a second. Meanwhile, I used half inch pieces of scrap wood as spacers between the first frame and the second one. And you're gonna see where this all started to fall apart. No pun intended. No real problem though, I just reattached the leg that messed up and then clamped everything down tight. I let it set overnight and when I came back the next day, this adhesive cured and was super strong. I wasn't nervous that the legs would hold, but for a little insurance, I drove some screws through the legs and into the frames. I also think it just made it look a little better too. And finally, on the inside of the planters, I added aluminum angle as a ledge for three boards to fit snugly in the bottom of the planter. There's a little bit of gap between the boards and this is gonna allow water to drain out. And of course, I don't want any gravel or soil to fall from the bottom of the planter, so I used a little bit of landscaping fabric as a barrier. This gravel base from Quickrete is gonna allow the water to drain through the planters if there's excess water. And from there, it was just time to use some organic soil and plants to stage these garden beds. And while I do that, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the Green Build initiative sponsored by Home Depot that I mentioned earlier on in the video. 
Later on this month, Home Depot is sending me, Benueta from Homemade Modern, and a lot of other influencers out to Atlanta to the Green Build Conference that's all about designing environmentally friendly and sustainable businesses and products. We'll both be sharing on Instagram, so stay tuned. And the Home Depot's environmental initiatives don't stop with the Green Build Conference. In fact, their Eco Options program recognizes the best products in six key categories. Energy efficiency, water conservation, sustainable forestry, healthy home, clean air, and circular economy. They've also set a science-based target of 50% energy reduction by 2035. The Home Depot's progress will come from continually improving energy efficiency in their operations and expanding their investments in renewable and alternative energy. In an effort to conserve water here in the Joshua Tree Desert, I used this drip irrigation system in the planters. That way water goes right where it needs to and limits waste. Plus, so it makes watering a whole lot more convenient. Overall, I really like the way this project came out. I had never used composite decking before and it was a good experience getting to try it for the first time. I love the fact that these planters basically water themselves and the sun or water will never make this composite decking rot or the color fade. Right now the planter that I filled with flowers is definitely a little more pretty but I'm excited to see how this herb and vegetable garden comes out. So as always, thanks a ton for watching and I really hope you enjoyed these planters. If you want to check out another planter video, my buddy Ben just made this one. It's made out of marble and it drains into the sink, so check it out, link in the description. If you're interested in learning more about this project, make sure and follow the link down in the description to my written article where there's free PDF plans. Also, if you'd like to learn more about Home Depot's Green Build Initiative, links for that will be in the description. And don't forget, stay tuned to Instagram at Modern Build so you can see me at the Green Build Conference starting November 21st. Make sure and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay updated every time I post new videos. And until next time, this has been Modern Builds. Bye, everybody. So the wood never rots and aluminum legs so that the... Let's do a take two. I'm gonna hit it though.